I'm Kurt and in today's video I'm gonna go show you real-time stats by using the TP-Link Omada OC200 controller. Now you can go down in the link below, um, description below, and you will see chapters so if you want to bounce around go right ahead. Uh, we'll be going through this whole OC200 so it's gonna be a little bit of a long video. This video or should we say I've been using the Omada stuff for about 45 maybe up to 60 to remove some of my ubiquity equipment now to use or to test the TP link but this TP link stuff will be moving over to an office shortly but in the meantime I wanted to show you some real-time stats so let's go ahead and look at the configuration of what I have and what products I have so we're gonna go ahead and click on this now when you log in your screen might be different than what I have initially I will go through that in a few minutes here on how to get your different types of stats showing up here We'll go up here and then you can see the various devices here. Um, I have two networks or two VPNs or two VLANs. I have a guest VLAN and then I also have my main uh, VLAN. You can see here I have one access point and then I have one core switch and this is the, the VPN router or the ER605 and then my internet. Now this ISP load testing here, eh, it's, uh, I don't think it's too accurate anyway but let's go ahead and go to my telco closet my half-assed telco closet and here you can see the actual devices that I have here so on top here is the OC 200 which is connected to the 8 port switch which is a Jetstream 8 port switch it's a PoE but only has four PO ports uh, PoE ports which is the first four right here the model number of this switch is the TLSG 200 8p and only has eight uh, four poe ports so a total of 62 watts according to, to the stats right below the oc200 is the er605 vpn router and you see here it basically has three cables the blue cable here is going to port 8 which is my uplink between the 8 port switch and the vpn router the red cable is going to AT&T which is symmetrical gig E in other words one up one gig up one gig down in theory and then the yellow one which you can see here snaking way down here is actually going to spectrum basic spectrum internet cable which is I think they bumped it up now to 300 by 10 which will be asymmetrical you have two differences in speed in this case here next to it is right here this thing let's zoom back in again is an actual cordless phone yes folks it's connected to the spectrum service is my office phone and here we have a cyber power UPS S I think it's SL or PL or SL 700 U and it's 370 watts which is more than enough power to maintain this in an outage and here's the fantastic AT&T U-verse cable running at Gigi now I do have access to 2.5 and 5 gigabytes but no I don't need it um, I do have two gamers in the gamer gamer people in the house and they don't see they never complain about the speed so in reality I can be viewing the TV they can be doing their streaming whether it be upstream whether they streaming from the house up and gaming at the same time and I never hear a complaint however when the AT&T service went away, which I will show you here in the statistics here, you'll see it. Then I started getting complaints because the up speed being 10 is pitiful for gaming. Very pitiful. They didn't complain too much about the download speed on the Spectre side, but the upload speed was killing them. Uh, when I switched over, it switched over. It was on the, the Spectrum for a few days, so we'll get to that in a second here. So let's go back to the OC200. And you can see the various stats here. So here we have statistics. So here, if you want to change how this is around here, now if you want to move these screens around, you know, so you just can't move them. You have to go into the edit mode here. So in the top right here, you can hit this blue coggy white icon thing. And now you have other tables or stat tables you can put on here. Now, once you're in this edit mode, then you can move it. Okay, and then you can move these around if you want to. Now we can go, let me just move this up here a little bit. And then all you do is just click on which one you want to be viewed up in the dashboard. And then you can move around as long as you stay in the edit mode. So let's scroll this down a little bit here. And then we're going to hit done. Also here you can play around with your dates. 
So we click here and let's do a start date of uh, the 21st and an end date of the nut. Oops, went too far. Let's go back again. Let's do a start date of the 20th and we don't need August 3rd. Let's just go back here to the 9th <laughs> and start date here again. And that's a little better. And you can see here, here's my dip. Yay. And there's the spectrum taken over. Pretty cool. You can see approximately when it happened. We'll go through this more here, but there you can see the dip. So let's go on to some other screens here. You can see we had a couple other failures or people trying to I guess, get in or forgot passwords or whatever. And here's more traffic switches and some other stuff down here. Right, and it's showing a wireless access point. So let's go to the map. So here you can get a general idea of my network. We have our ISPs, then we have the ER605, then we have the eight port TP-Link, and then we have the EAP615 wall port access point. We have the Amato C200 controller. Here, if you click on this, you'll get all the different um, devices that are connected to the access point, all right? And there you have it. Here's a group here. Now you're getting more stuff. And let's move it around here. We got more stuff connected. So there, let's go ahead to the devices. Now we have our devices here. You can click on each one of these if you want to. For example, we'll click here. And then you can see all the serial numbers and all that stuff of your device. How much power is being used. You can see here I have 87% of my power still available. And all the stats, serial numbers, and all that stuff and what's connected to what here. This is the OC200, as you can see here, which is only a 100 megabit um, connection, and but it's PoE, and you can see how many watts is being used here, 2.7. And here is the EPA, the access point here is called the wireless, and you can see the stats, and you see it's using 4.8 watt. Nothing in this, nothing in this. Here is a switch is connected. This is a ubiquity eight port, 150 watt switch, I forget the model number. But that's connected to port 5 and has a bunch of other stuff hanging off of it. And then uplink here is to the ER or the VPN router to the ER605, TP-Link ER605 device. Now here, this will let you know if you have an update. If you want to check, you just hit this magic button and it'll check for it. Here you can re reboot, you can locate it, it goes with the stuff start blinky, blinky, blinky. Large one of these, but you, in my network, uh, can't figure out what the stuff is, uh, you got problems. Again, and then here you can click on this stuff here. Oop, I don't want to reboot it. That cancel. Let's click on here and you get more devices, the detail, clients, all the clients, no guests, config. And then here is where I manually set up the IP addresses. So I usually have reserved the top 10 addresses for network devices. And the bottom 10 for servers, whether it be Windows servers, Linux servers, just servers. Uh, everything else is DHCP. So the uh, 1 through 10 will be static, and then 245 to 254 will be static, and DHCP will be in the middle. Now I'm only running two VLANs on this device here. You can see it's quite high. You no, know, I don't have that many devices on 2.4 here. It's using some, uh, it's using some uh, stuff. Let's go here. We can look at the uh, um, statistics. Here's your CPU menu. So now we can go here. This is your ER605. And underneath here is my WAN, which will be my AT&T. And then here will be my Spectrum. Here, let me drop down one. And then you can see whatever you need to see on that. Networks. Again, you can see I have two networks. Donald, the third, the third octet, the only difference between the two. Uh, the config again you got some weird services here smp i don't use a lot of this stuff here don't care about it and then you have your stats so there you have it there's your devicing again this looks so eerily similar to ubiquity but not as refined yet as ubiquity i don't think the er605 can handle any type of ips or I ids um, it probably would probably would really really slow down below the old mighty USG by Ubiquity, which when you start putting all that crap on, it'd probably be lucky if you do 100 up and down 
uh, with the USG. Moving on, now let's go to clients. Here we've got a whole list of our clients. 14 wireless devices on there. You see all the various things. Wired devices. Here, this is all, most of this, the vault, the safe. The switch is the ubiquity one. That's the ubiquity switch. This is also the ubiquity switch. And there's the OC200. Now notice this blue dot and that blue dot. This is basically, this is Mars. This is the PC that you're seeing it on. So basically it's letting you know that it's connected to the OC controller. All right, let's move this out of the way here. Let's move this one out of the way here and you can see more stuff. Now you can search for certain devices. Again, here's all the stuff here. We can, uh, we can put this down. Come on. Yeah, geez, it's not quite ready for prime time. And all our great devices here. See, I got more than, we got 21 devices. <laughs> So here's all my great stuff. Hey, guess who phone that is? Yeah. And so here's some weird stuff that I have on my network. So let's go to Insight. And here you got the various insights, all the different has been connections, new connections, old connections, past connections, past portals authorization, which I don't use, switch stats, great switch stats, all the stuff here. Now, here you see your wattage, right? And the two devices that are using them. Right here and right here. Double clicking on this does absolutely crap. Here, if you just go ahead and edit, you're just going to edit some names and stuff like that. Nothing major. Uh, you can delete it and then you can power cycle the port on and off to reboot your device. Cool, huh? And uplink to the um, ER605. POEs, it shows you the POEs, counters. All counted, disconnected, blah, 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 blah. Port forwarding, I do have a port forwarding. This is going to, as you can see here, to my web server, Terra. Show you that in a minute where you do that. No VPN, dynamic routing table. Again, this shows routes. This will have all the routes to your your ISPs here, as you can see them, uh, dynamic. And then the rogue IPs, which I don't have any hanging out. Logs here. Here's all the logs that you can see. Here's all the archive logs. And here you can see um, when the at t went down and up. All right? And the various things. Here's reports. Now we have various reports here. 6.29 gigabytes, uh, terabytes of traffic. That's because from June 19th to July 9th. I don't know how accurate it is. It seems a little steep. Seems a little, a little steep, I don't think so. I don't remember even using that on my Ubiquity. Wouldn't even show that much. Um, so I don't think this is, I don't know how accurate it is or what it's doing. Uh, I gotta look into it a little more, but it's okay. It's fine. See, notice you can't do five minutes because it's too long. We can switch over to daily, and then you get different uh, aspects. Uh, the report, again, you can change your time. Here's some more data. It's okay, you can't click on any of this stuff. Not like if you're used to the ubiquity, sometimes you can click on certain things and get any more detailed information. Again, there's no like IPS or IDS running on device, the ER605. Wireless summary, give a few seconds to load up. More great stuff. More great stuff. Wired summary, now let's see what we get here. Now we have our IPS load here, you can see where it went down again. Looks like it started coming up. What time is that? That's uh, the June 28th, 8 p.m. It looks like it was fully recovered again at 8 p.m. And see, so it started to go down on the 23rd, and then the 24th, it finally went down. So we click over to here, and we can see our spectrum side go up and then go down. So there was my failure of AT&T. Yes, I did call and say, hey, need some return money, please? A little more than 24 hours there, buddies. So there's more stats here, PO stats, whatever. Again, you can't really click on this stuff. It's not quite ready, not quite as refined as Ubiquity. I keep on mentioning Ubiquity. It seems to be a little more ahead of the game when it comes to uh, statistics and what you can run on um, you know security firewalls and all that stuff nothing really beats the netgate stuff I do have a netgate g1100 
uh, that I had here. The neck gate's really good, um, but then I was running my ubiquity stuff too. Uh, get rid of the USG because it's a little, a little slow, people. It's a little slow. So wireless devices, wired devices, just devices and more devices, and then uh, wired devices again. Here I have some type of something happened here. We really paid attention. Don't know what happened here, but looks like we had some type of fluke. Fluke. Uh, my SIDs, there are two of them here, but you notice that the DOS gas has nothing on it. Drink beer, only made for this video. Clients, and then more clients, and more clients. Nothing here too major. Same old stuff. Now let's go to the admin, and this is all your cloud maintenance stuff. I really do like the cloud maintenance stuff. I really do wish that um, NetGate products would uh, allow you to do that, have some type of cloud, but then again, there are much better firewall then ubiquity and uh, and TP link in my opinion in my opinion but I'm gonna go after the unified dream pro whatever dream machine rack mounted one eventually and see how much better it is if it's better than the PF sense or NetGate product so that'll be in future videos but here we got my cloud maintenance crap um, I really do like cloud. I do like the cloud crap. And some people are like, oh, but I, I really do like it. I think it's really, uh, really good. So let's go to settings. We'll go through the settings real quick here. We got some other settings here. Here's again to uh, connect to the TP-Link junk. Here's some other stuff here. Maybe you can guess some stuff here. Let's go to wired networks. Here's where you configure your failover here. I, I didn't. I'm not doing low balancing. Because why when your one internet is so much slower than your other internet? So I just do failover routing. Everybody does like it. Nobody knows it when it failed over. Only when they turned on gaming. Internet LAN. You can see my two LANs. Uh, let me go back to that. You can see my two LANs I created. The only difference is the octet. Um, here I do rate limit this or bandwidth limit it. Uh, we'll get that in a second. Here the wireless networks. You can see my two SSIDs I created. DOS gas and uh, drink beer. Network security, not really doing too much here. Not too much here, just whatever. Got some other stuff here, attack defense. I just left all the stuff to default. Uh, the firewall, nothing too fantastic. Transmission, no, this is where, not, where you set up your bandwidth limits and all that. NAT is where you do your port forwarding, as you can see here. This is not where you set up VPNs if you have a VPN, which I do not have a VPN. I'll do a video on how to set that up with the TP Link one day time range. Now, this is where you set your rate limit. This is where I set my rate limit for the guest network, where they plug in or use the SSID that would be limited to 50 up, D down. There you go. Some authentication crap, which I'm not using at this time. Services, we got the various different services here, which I'm not using. I don't have SSH even enabled <laughs> uh, yet. But here's your upgrade stuff. Export data. Controller, more information on the controller here. Can you take a guess my NTP servers that I'm using? Or right here we have other stuff. Cloud access again, it's enabled, maintenance. All the great maintenance, migration, auto backup. Well, there you have it. In a nutshell, you have your OC controller stats and all that great stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to look at the description below for stuff. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have yourself a healthy and wonderful day. Until the next video.